Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to be showing you how to build this wooden tripod. I built it out of 1x2s from Home Depot and a couple of nuts and bolts, I'll show you that in the video. Um, I would like to apologize in advance, this is my first woodworking video, so it's a little bit monotone, not quite as entertaining as I was hoping it'd be, um, but it is very informative and I'll take you through step by step on how to build this. So I'm going to start by taking these 1x2s and ripping them in half. 1x2 uh, is not quite exact, they're actually only about 3 quarters of an inch thick not a full one inch thick um, and then you take out an eighth inch for the uh, blade width and you're left with two pieces that are just shy of three eighths inches thick. All right, so I've decided to make these three and a half feet long so I'll mark that here and I have three legs each requiring four of these boards so I need to cut out twelve of these So to make the bottom part of these tripod legs, I'm going to take two of these boards, both three and a half feet long, and I'm going to glue these spacers in between. Now these spacers are just one by twos that are three inches long, and when I glue them together, it's going to create a gap here, which will allow for the sliding action when we build the top part of the legs later on. Now before you do this, you're going to want to take some, I just took a hundred grit sandpaper and sanded any blade marks left by the table saw from when we ripped these in half so that will not inhibit the sliding action when it comes later. So to make the top part of the leg, I'm going to take two of these boards, again three and a half feet long, and uh, one of these spacers. Now I've used some calipers and a pencil to mark the center line of this board, and then also the center line on uh, this spacer on both sides. I'll just glue this down and line these up as close as I can, trying to keep it as close to center and keeping it as parallel as possible with the rest of the board. I'm going to use this paper towel to uh, get rid of any excess glue. Um, it's a lot easier to take care of it now rather than after it dries. And the reason I'm taking care of this is um, it's going to make it a lot easier to slide if there's not this bit in here. There's really no room for this once the leg is, is, complete, is completed. So in about a half hour once the glue dries, I'm going to take this to the drill press and put dowels on this side uh, because there's going to be some force trying to, there's going to be some force on, on this um, piece here. Now I want to caution you, don't, uh, with the bottom half of the legs, we put spacers on both sides. Uh, you do not want to put a spacer on both sides of the top half of the leg because this is the uh, part that's going to connect to the base. And I'll show you how to do that, obviously, after we build the legs, and then we obviously have to build the base, too, before we can attach it. So as you can see here, I've got the bottom portion of a leg built here, and the top portion partially assembled here. When they go together, they'll fit together like this, and then that's going to give us the sliding action, so we can either contract or extend the leg to make the tripod either shorter or taller. Um, unfortunately, the spacer is built out of the exact same width of material as this leg was. So when they're like this, there's not... In fact, this spacer is below these other two pieces. So there's going to be no contact between this spacer and the board that I'm going to try to glue on this side. And that's problematic for a good hold. Uh, so I'm going to take this bottom piece to the jointer and essentially just use it as a planer and try to take some of this material off the top. Um, and that's going to make it thin enough where the spacer will fit inside with a little bit sticking out of the, of the other side so I can glue that piece on. Take one. 
And as you can see, now these are perfectly flush with one another after the jointer, and that sticks up just enough to put another board on. Off camera, what I've done is taken these to the drill press and used a quarter inch drill bit to put two holes in where the spacer is here, and then put dowels in there and glued them in to strengthen this joint. Uh, then I took it to the uh, belt sander and just sanded those flush and then I did the same thing here these I think are much more important I've done three of them um, because there's going to be quite a bit of torquing on this piece of wood trying to snap it off so I put three in there to really give this a lot of extra strength so now to assemble the leg I'm gonna do this and line this board up as best I can um, once it's glued on there, we'll have a fully assembled leg with this sliding action. So to do that, I'm going to remove this, put some glue on the spacer, It's important to make sure you have all the glue off of the side so it doesn't stick on this board because there's, you want them to slide. Again, just line this up flush with the bottom here and then line it up all the way along the edge to make sure that both of them are parallel to each other. And clamp it down. So to ensure this doesn't stick, I'm just going to slide it back and forth, and in about 10 minutes I'll do that again just to make sure that uh, there's no chance of the glue sticking this piece and this piece together. Um, once it's dried for about a half hour, I'll take it to the drill press again and put two holes, or three holes in here, to strengthen that joint. So I'll just do this to the other two legs, and then we will assemble the base for the tripod and the mechanism that's going to hold this. Um, in place when it's extended or contracted. So the next thing we have to do is make a locking mechanism for this leg because when it slides out, um, you know, let's say you want it at this height, um, when you put weight on it, it'll just slide back. So I've come up with this uh, mechanism here. I'm just going to take one of these uh, one by twos. I've cut it to length to fit right on here. Um, drilled a hole for a T-nut to fit in, and this is a three eighths inch T-nut. And then I've drilled four holes where each one of these. Uh, reach one of these little spikes are going to go so the wood doesn't split. Um, installing these is fairly simple. Uh, once you get those holes drilled, you just uh, install it. And uh, so now that that's on there, I'll install this one a little bit better later. You can see you have to whack it a couple of times with the hammer. But uh, So I'll glue this on here, and then there's going to be quite a bit of stress on this uh, on this piece and there's not very much surface area for the glue to bind so I'm going to take one of these uh, old scrap pieces from the legs and just glue it here and then I'll run dowels um, into it that way to give it some extra strength. Uh, the other thing you want to do is make sure that this T-nut is facing down because all the tension is going to be pulling on it this way um, and if it is that way it's just going to push this T-nut farther and farther into the wood and that's fine. If you glue it this way the pressure is going to try to pull that T-nut up and out. So be sure to glue it down like this.
Alright, so to build the base, I've cut out two equilateral triangles on the uh, on the miter saw. So I've just set that to 60 degrees and cut it, and then another 60 degrees and cut it. Um, these are three, uh, no, they are four and a half inches long, and these are three inches long. Now this is actually left over, from, these parts are left over from when I built the tripod that the camera is actually currently sitting on. Um, I thought this was going to be too small, but uh, so I built a bigger one. Uh, but that's actually too big, and this is going to be just the right size for, again, the smaller tripod that the camera's sitting on right now. If you've been building uh, this at home, or if you're thinking about building this at home, uh, don't use these measurements. Build the bigger one that's about five and a half inches long here, and these are four inches long a piece. Um, that'll be more appropriate for the one that I'm going to build. So right at the end of the build, I'll just swap out the bases and show you the difference between them. So what I've done is marked here um, equidistant sides so I know exactly where these are going to fit. Um, it's about an inch and a half in and mostly I just wanted these parallel so these don't end up at an angle either way. So again, the, these boards are just a quarter inch birch project board that I got at Home Depot. Um, and these again are just the one by twos and they're cut to three inches. Now, like I said, if you're going to be building this with the dimensions that I've been using so far, the legs that are three and a half feet long a piece and then you glue them together that way. Uh, you're going to want these to be four inches long and the triangle to be five and a half inches long on each side. So it's been about 10 minutes, so I took the clamps off. I'm just going to glue this other piece on um, and match it up as best you can with the, uh, with the other piece already here. And I'm just going to let that sit for about a half hour now. Right, so what I've done here is I've taken the uh, the one by twos that we've ripped in half and cut four pieces that are five inches long and three pieces that are only three inches long. And I'll show you how to assemble these right here. Right, so what you can see here is one, I've taken uh, two five inch pieces and put uh, a three inch in between them and a three inch on the side. And then on this one, I've taken the two five inch pieces and just put a single three inch in the middle, but not another one on the side. And I will show you what those do in a few minutes. So off camera, what I did was I took a square, so I found the center of this, I'm um, just drawing a line through the, uh, through the points of the triangle, and then drilled a half inch uh, hole and that will be uh, where the camera actually swivels and then these bits I took to the belt sander and rounded off the top and then cleaned up the sides um, and then taped them together and drilled a quarter inch hole through here so that way some uh, quarter inch all thread can go through and just like we're going to put a locking mechanism on the legs uh, you'll be able to put this to, to any position that you want to and then tighten that down so it doesn't move um, I also took quarter inch all thread and put it here, drilled a hole in the top uh, for quarter inch all thread and um, because the, the, my camera um, there's a little port in the bottom that uh, fits quarter inch all thread perfectly so um, and then on this one I drilled a half inch hole so dowel will be glued in here and then it'll be able to be put on here and then swivel and I'll show you that in just a minute so I just cut this dowel, um, so it should be able to fit however far you drill the hole um, in this piece. And then through here and stick out about an inch on this side, and I'll show you what that's for in a second. So off camera I just took a, a scrap piece of wood, about an inch by an inch, give or take, and drilled a half inch hole through it. Um, then I put my uh, base through here, slid this on the end, and then took a uh, took a drill and just drilled a quarter inch hole 
to fit this quarter inch dowel and the reason I did that was when it's all said and done and this is on top of the tripod if you want to lift up on the camera or if you want to change the camera or something um, with this on here it kind of locks it in place and it's not going anywhere um, if you didn't do that then you just pull the camera right off alright so a couple of things I've done is I've taken a quarter inch drill bit and uh, drilled out these holes here um, one on each one of these uh, legs, I guess you can call it, where the legs will attach to um, on the base. And I've also cut um, quarter inch all thread. All thread is just essentially a really long bolt. I think it's about three feet when you, uh, when you first get it, depending on what you get. Um, so I've cut that to length, and now there's a piece of all thread that runs through there that I can, uh, when it's loose, I can move this. When I tighten this wing nut down, it doesn't move very easily. Um, enough friction to hold the camera anyway, and that's all we're going for. Uh, I've also made these. I've taken 3 8 inch uh, all thread, which is the same stuff we use the the same thread the T nuts were that are in the locking mechanism for the leg here. So uh, um, I've just taken some all thread and cut enough and welded the T nut on there, um, and now this can screw in and it will lock this leg in wherever you want it. You can just lock this in and then it won't move. Uh, so a couple things you need to do before we can assemble is cut the uh, cut the all thread to length for here so the legs will attach. Like this, so and then you can tighten it down so they'll move or they won't. Um, and then I need to install some all thread here for the camera and then I think that's just about it. So in the top piece of this camera mount, I've taken a piece of all thread and cut it to length so it will fit in the uh, in the mount here with just enough for the camera to actually screw onto. Uh, so I'm just going to secure that in there with some epoxy. Now you do want to be sure to get any of this squeeze out out um, as soon as you can because once it hardens it becomes like a plastic and it, you're not going to be able to get that off. So if there's any on the threads be sure to get those off. Um, and then even if you get the one minute instant epoxy or the five minute epoxy or whatever it is, um, if you read the fine print it's not supposed to actually handle stress for 24 hours. So do keep that in mind when you're doing this. Alright, so here we have our finished tripod. To assemble this from what I've showed you so far, all I need to do is take um, some all thread and thread it through both of these holes and then tighten it down and then the leg should stay there just fine. So that's how you build a wooden tripod. Um, if you have any questions, please do leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. Uh, now, I would like to take a minute and talk to you about my next video. I'm going to be building a hope chest. I got the plans originally as a toy chest uh, for this event um, that Mark uh, uh, who refers to himself as the Wood Whisperer on YouTube, and Steve, who runs Woodworking for Mere Mortals. I'll put a link to both of their videos in the description below. Um, I strongly suggest you uh, check those videos out, and if you build one of these chests by the end of November, uh, you can help woodworkers fighting cancer. So, like I said, check if they have more information in their videos, uh, check it out. I know if I try to explain, I'll probably screw some kind of information up. So. Um, Mark's kind of in charge of that, but Steve's got a great video on it too, and they build, both of them build uh, toy chests, so I strongly recommend those. Um, and you can help woodworkers fighting cancer. So, uh, be sure to like and subscribe and do whatever else you did, it is that you do with these YouTube videos. And thank you guys so much for watching.